Hi, I'm Lori George with Let's Make Art. Today we are going to be working on our Let's Make Art Matter. And we have Keenan here on the camera. Oh, hello. Hello. Hi. Thank you. This is our my first Let's Make Art Matter, so it's kind of special to me. And today we're going to be sending some love to Kathleen as she's going through some grief. So we, um, so Kathleen is a longtime member of our community here at LMA. Uh -huh. And she's always encouraged art and creativity with her children growing up. And last year, Kathleen lost her husband of 45 years, and her daughter sent sent in the um, sent us the messages and let us know that she it was like her great love and her constant companion. And so it's really it, it's a really tough loss. And one of the ways that Kathleen and her family have been dealing with this loss is with art. So they have been holding weekly um, art zooms oh, cool. every Sunday, where they paint together live and then show each other your work and show each other their work. They are very thankful for this, op thankful for the opportunity to have the art to help them heal through and deal with their grief. And so we just want to send her some love and let her know that there are people that care. Um, sometimes we don't know what to say. And so art can be a great way to express our support and our love for somebody. So let's do it. I'm so in. Does so that sound good? Okay. So if you have the acrylic starter box, then you will have a postcard that is addressed and stamped, ready to go, that you can send to Kathleen. If you do not, you can contact um, our customer happiness team at hello at Let's Make Art, and they will they'll hook you up with the address. Nice. Yeah. Okay. So our project today is inspired by the tulip bouquet that we have in our acrylic starter box. Ooh. And so we're going to do a single version, do a single flower. Now, I want to show you some samples, examples here, like you can change up the color palette however you would like. I'm going to demonstrate this one right here with the peach and the kind of blue-green background. But let's send Kathleen lots of flowers. Let's send her different color flowers. You can even change the shape of the bloom if you want. It doesn't have to be the kind of the tulip shape. You can do whatever you want. But let's send her some love. I Does love that it. sound good? Yes. Okay. All right. So let's get started. So first thing I'm going to do is turn over my postcard onto the blank side or the textured side, and we're gonna create our background. So today, let me go through the supplies. We have our postcards here, and then I also have my water here for washing off my brush, my, my wash basin, and then the paints we're gonna to use today are uh, titanium white, primary yellow, primary red, primary blue, and Mars black. All colors that came in the starter box, if you got that. For brushes today, I'm using the half inch flat brush here and then I'm going to also use a palette knife. You don't have to have a palette knife. Basically you just want something that you can use to scratch in. Do scraffito. Okay. Okay. We're going to do a little bit of that. For my palette today I'm using a paper palette pad that we that we carry that I like and um, I think I said this before Keenan's probably heard it many times. I like mm -hmm. to have multiples of these going mm -hmm. so I can have lots of space for mixing my colors. Okay. I think we're ready to get started. Yes. Okay. So I'm going to keep, if you've painted with me before, you might have seen that I like to have some extra paper to the side to use to wipe off my extra paint and create maybe a little bit of an abstract pro project or maybe they'll become something later, a okay. nice um, art piece for it me. It is fun to see how those develop throughout, it is. throughout your painting's process. Yeah. Very fun. Well, I'm glad. Yeah. Yeah. And this, the paper I'm using is a six by nine Let's Make Art paper that comes in a pad. I kind of like the small size sometimes. All right, so to do our background, we're going to start off with a dark color. So I'm going to mix that color by first starting with some black. So I'm going to pick up some black and put it here. Then I'm going to grab some blue, okay? So I know this is a blue-green, so I've got my blue and I've got my black. What the black does is it's going to desaturate my green, make it like a nice blue-green, a gray blue-green. And then I pick up some yellow, though, so that I can add it to the blue to make green. Does that make sense? Yes, that makes sense. Now, when you're mixing a dark color, sometimes it's really hard to see actually um, like what the undertones are, because right now like it's reading fairly black. Yeah. But if I add a tiny bit of white, it'll start to show what the color is. Oh. And so then I can decide, do I want to add, do I want to add a little bit more yellow and make it kind of a tiny bit more green? Or do I want to add some more blue just to make it a little more vibrant? I'm going to add some more blue. Okay. What do you think? 
All right, so I'm gonna take this and I, I still, I wanna keep it a dark value because we're gonna add some white to it up here towards the top to give some depth and dimension to our background. All right, so what you're gonna do is you're gonna make a U shape here, okay? It, it's somewhat of a shallow U shape or smile, smiley face shape. I like smiley faces. Smiley face. Um, I'm gonna add a little bit of water to keep my paint flowing. I want my paint to somewhat glide on the page as opposed to feel really sticky and um, hard to move. I'm gonna make sure I get all, fill in all of the white dots and areas. And I like the look of brush strokes, so I say don't worry about um, the brush strokes showing. You don't have to have it completely perfect. And then, so now what I'm gonna do is go ahead and add some white to my mixture. Blend that in there, and then I'm gonna fill this part in. Now you wanna work fairly quickly because once I fill this top part in, I want to blend it out with this darker area. And I might add a little bit of water too to keep everything kind of wet. There we go. That's a, those are, I love those colors already. <laughs> Yay. And then don't be afraid to kind of come in here and just kind of do some light little kind of hints of what's, what's up top there, right? Because light reflects all over the place. It so does. it is possible that we would have a little bit of light kind of coming through down there as well. Okay, so I'm gonna use the heat it tool to dry this, but you can set it down, walk away, get a snack, let it dry, and then we'll come back. All right, so now if your postcard is dry, you are ready to begin your flowers. And I have a little bit of paint left over on my brush, so I'm gonna go ahead and wipe it onto my brush board here. And you can see it there. I'm gonna kind of make a deliberate dark mark here. Add some darks in there. Okay, I like to wipe off as much paint as I can to minimize the amount that goes down our into our water system. So I'm gonna go ahead and then I'll rinse off the rest here. In this wash basin, there's some ridges, and so it helps to get the paint out of the bristles of the brush, which I really like. And I, I like having a lot of water because mm. it'll get dirty fast. Yeah, that water <laughs> basin is sweet. Very cool. Okay, so um, as I showed in the with the other samples, you can vary your composition with how you do your flower. You can have it kind of towards the top, you can have it perfectly centered in the middle, or if you want, you can angle it whichever way you want. I chose to angle it this way, kind of coming off here, the cup shape going that way, it's and nice. the stem coming down here. It makes me think of wind is blowing. Yeah, you know? why not? Why? And so this is a very like loose, loose tulip, loose flower technique. Um, so just kind of go with it because once, when you get started, it might feel a little bit different, but then once you get the layers going, you're going to start to see it reveal itself and it's, it's fun. And we're thinking about Kathleen and I hope that she really enjoys these. Truly. I actually really do like that. We do Let's Make Art Matter here. It's nice, isn't it? It is. Yeah. It's a really nice concept. Okay. So to make my blossom here, which is kind of a peachy pink color, I'm going to take some white and some red. Okay, mix that together. And you'll see this is kind of a cooler pink. So to warm that up, I'm gonna add a little bit of yellow. I do have some green going on over there, so I'm gonna be careful like not to touch the green. Mm. If I did touch the green just a little, that's okay. It would desaturate it a little bit and that's not necessarily a problem. All right, so I'm gonna kind of start there for my base layer of the tulip. And so, you can try and draw this in with a pencil if you want, or like me, you can kind of just go for it, mm -hmm. right? And so let me give you a couple tips. So a tulip is tip, is a kind of a cup shape or U-shaped flower. And so what I like to do is kind of decide, and I'm gonna start small. I always wanna start small because I can always add more petals on the outside. So I'm gonna kind of make a U-shape in the direction that I want it to go, okay? I'm kind of decide how far do I want it to come down this way? How far up do I want it to go that way? Okay, so that's kind of my basic cup shape there, as far as like the bottom of it. That would be my tulip. That would be your tulip. <laughs> We're done. Great. Yeah, that's it. <laughs> okay, so then I want to kind of tuck, then I want to fill this in, okay? And I want to make it a little bit taller. So I'm going to pick one of these to kind of come in, um, kind of like a little comma shape. And I'm gonna pick one on the side to kind of do the same thing. And then in the middle, I'm just gonna kind of 
block it in any, a little bit. So it, I don't want to make a zigzag shape. I want it to be somewhat organic looking. So just kind of fill that in and don't worry too much about, you know, brush strokes. I actually kind of like brush strokes. There we go. So that is the base of your tulip. Nice. Now, while it's still wet, I'm going to go ahead. First, I'm going to brush off some of this on my paper. And then I'm going to go ahead and add some white to my mixture here. And a little bit of, let's see, let's do some red. So I'm going to make this a little more vibrant. And add some yellow. So now we're just kind of making a, a little bit of a darker orange, peachy orange color. What would you call that? Coral? Maybe? Coral. Coral? Yep. Okay. So. I, I mean, that's what I would call it. When you said it, I immediately agreed. <laughs> I like that. Okay, so now what I'm going to do is I'm going to bring in some strokes, but I don't want to cover up the base bloom that I just made because I want some of that to peek through to help create that dimension. So I'm just going to kind of pick a couple little spots and I'm going to use kind of the flat part of my brush in some, in some ways because I, I don't want all the same stroke. Does that make sense? It does okay. make sense. So see how like we added another color, a layer, some depth, but we didn't cover the entire uh, background. And then I'm going to go ahead and add some little scratching in and you can kind of make it in the shape of a petal or you can just kind of um, right go name. for it. <laughs> yeah, whatever you want to do. <laughs> All right, so that won't all show in the final layer, so, but it's kind of fun to see it peeking through. All right, so now what I'm gonna do is I'm going to, before I mix, before I leave, I'm gonna maybe add a tiny bit of, kind of look at the shape of my tulip and make sure I like where it's at. Okay, I feel pretty good about that. That's a good tulip. You like that? Yes, I do. And we're not even done yet. All right, so I'm gonna brush off my extra paint. And then I'm gonna let the, the bloom dry while we start the stem. So as you can see in the, uh, the inspiration project here, our tulip project, tulip bouquet, mm. there's a lot of leaf action. It's very kind of just fun and free. That looks so good. So we are, well, thank you. You're welcome. So we are going to embrace that feeling with the expressiveness that we're gonna do and we're gonna Go for it. Okay, so to make these expressive strokes, let me just show you on, let's use this paper here. If you took, if you did the um, tulip bouquet tutorial, you're, you're already familiar, but if you have not, let me just show you real quick um, how to make some of these expressive strokes. So I'm gonna do some blue and some yellow to make a quick green here. Okay, and what I wanna do is I wanna make sure I have enough water in there for a fluid movement so that my paintbrush is not dragging too much and then I want most of the paint on this part the the toe the front section front half of my brush as opposed to a gloppy mess which sometimes happens it's okay all right and then what I'm going to do is I'm going to um, hold my brush kind of at an angle so you see how I have it kind of at a 45 degree angle and I'm just going to push and pull okay but I go a lot faster yeah. so it's making kind of like parentheses Okay. Ooh, commas. Commas and parentheses. Um, now, if I go, if I want a longer shape, then I'm just gonna pull it longer. Mm. Okay. And then if you flick it, it it just gives a better look. It looks. You can see all that little texture poking through. It looks like a dry brush almost. It's nice. Um, now, if I just want a thin line, then I'm gonna make sure I have my paint's nice and fluid, and then I have paint loaded on the toe of my brush, the tip of my brush, and then I'm gonna give, have a very light hold and a very light touch, okay? Mm. So you can still move quickly. The more I push, okay, the more of a thick, wide stroke I'm gonna get. Okay, so we feel confident? Very what do you confident. Think? You ready to do this? I'm okay. feeling good. Feeling good. Now, I, this is a little bit saturated of a green for me, so I'm going to add a tiny bit of black. Actually, you know what I should do? Hmm. I should add some red. Oh, yes. If you, I don't paint all the time with black, and a lot of artists um, might not either because sometimes it can dull your colors quickly, but a little black's not bad. 
and it's good to know how to use it, but one way to desaturate a color is to mix a little bit of its opposite color in there. And so we know the opposite of green is red. So I'm gonna add a touch of red. The old compliment. And there we go. And that actually darkens it too. Do you see how that went from being kind of a bright, like marker box green to mm -hmm. a little bit more of a desaturated green? Mm -hmm. Okay, and I also know that since my background is dark that I'm gonna need a little bit of a lighter value so that the stem will show. So I can do that by adding some white or yellow. Oh. But for this, I'm gonna add, I'll be adding yellow later because we're gonna do a variety of, so I'll be adding yellow later because we're gonna do a variety of like kind of some warm and cool leaf, leaf shapes and textures. But right now I'm gonna go ahead and just make sure that my stem is a value and color that I can see. Okay, so I'm gonna kind of smash off any excess I have on my brush, load up the, the top part of my brush and so this is when we're gonna do a longer line. And I know that since the, the shape of the tulip is kind of pointing that way, the stem is not gonna be straight down, right? That would look funny, but right. the stem is gonna kind of, it's gonna mimic that angle. Mm. So that, you know, and especially tulips, they often are very bendy, I've noticed. Ah. Um, they got big heads, so nice. a little top yeah. heavy there. All right, so I'm gonna start here and then I'm just gonna, with a very light touch, pull down. Okay. Ooh, that's nice. Yeah. So I don't need to do a ton. Now, if you want to use kind of the corner of your brush and create a little bit of like a base for your stem, you can. But as you can see here, like that's not necessarily going to show a lot. So don't worry. Don't worry. We just want to get something down. So with that idea, I'm going to go ahead and add some leaves and I'm going to add a big thick leaf here by pushing down. Okay. And then bringing in another stroke there. Ooh. Okay. And I don't mind having a little bit of the background showing through. I actually kind of like it. I do too. In fact, what if we did? Yes, please. Like this. <laughs> Wish granted. The first time Keenan ever saw me scratch into something, he was like, what? <laughs> <laughs> I think his mind literally was blown. No. It was. It was actually. <laughs> so continuing with this same color here, I'm just going to add a few more little strokes. And if you kind of twist your handle while you go see what that might make it might make a little bit of a fold more of a folded leaf kind of show you here so if i if i start over here and i just kind of twist it then it might you know actually i'm right-handed so i want to go the other way you'll figure out what feels best for your hand okay so if i kind of like twist it as i go you want to start start with the tip and then kind of twist it mm. yeah okay so play around, see what kind of shapes you can get. Don't worry too much about it looking any sort of way. The best thing that you can do is just keep loose and light touches. If you're, if you're going in there real tight like this, it's not gonna be loose because we're being tight, right? Right. A little more control. So free yourself from that and just enjoy the process. I'm gonna go ahead and add a few little like strokes here and there, okay? This is, I have a little bit more white now in my mixture, so it's bringing in a little more um, of a lighter tone. Tint. <laughs> ah, tint. the tint. The tint. Okay, so I like that. And so what I'm gonna do is continue with the cooler colors of my, of my stems and my stem and leaves by adding, I'm gonna add a little bit of blue to this. I really love just all the different greens that we can come up with, the blue greens, the yellow greens. It's so fun to add and really mix it up. Well, and when you start layering things and you have those variety of colors, mm -hmm. oh goodness, certain <laughs> things pop so much more. It's true, it's true. So what I like to do is change the temperature of it, making it maybe a little more cool or a little, or I'll change the vibrancy of it, make it a little more vibrant mm -hmm. or intense by adding more of the pure color. And then I also like to change the value by adding white yes. and sometimes black. All right. So we'll kind of see, let's add a few of these blue and I'm just going for it. Do you see how much, how, how, like if I just kind of don't worry too much. So I was thinking about that one a little much. Okay. I'm just going to keep, just kind of go in there, make sure that you have the paint loaded on the tip of your brush and just flick. Nice. Yeah. It seems more natural. Yes. Like an actual leaf is there. And I like to also use the little corner of my brush to make some little dashes or dots. Okay, 
So right now, this, is, this uh, color is fairly low contrast compared to our background, so I feel free to kind of do whatever I want. It's not going to show should. too much. You should feel should that Should I? Way. Yes. Thank you, Keenan. <laughs> You're welcome. Okay. All right, so while I have this color, I'm going to keep the same pile. What I do is I just keep inching kind of toward, I use like the edge of a pile so I can still, so I can make a new color, but I still have my color that I had previously right there. Does that make sense? Yes, it does. So here's where I start. You kind of see my progression. Yes. Yeah. All right, so go ahead and add a little bit of white to make it lighter, and then I'm going to go ahead and pop in some yellow. Oh, fun. Ooh, see how that warmed that up? So much. <laughs> I don't know how to, my brush is getting, there we go. All right, so add a little water, make sure it's fluid. Kind of doing what I want here, and I'm gonna add a few more strokes. What should I do? Let's see, how about, ooh, look at that. And I know that like, if I'm just considering this being one tulip, that I wanna kind of keep the leaves kind of coming at, at kind of an angle hugging around it. It's kind of like parentheses, if you will. But I'm not gonna worry too much about that, because I wanna have fun. Okay. And I love having these little whimsical little marks up there as well. Okay, so that's all I'm gonna do for that. And I'm gonna scratch in and then I'm gonna let that dry and we'll move on to our next layer for our bloom. Ooh, ooh. All right, you don't have to do long marks. You can do little dots if you want to, or little dashes, anything. It's just so great how you can, how you can make it more like have more depth, I guess. Yeah. Just by scratching it up a little bit. <laughs> it really breaks up that solid mass of color yeah. too, which I think just adds to like the flow of the painting, the composition, so you're not too drawn to one large solid mass. And it gives that brush an opportunity to be, you know, gain more skill points. Skill point, eh, you yeah, know? For the brush, it's, it's got it a feels more family useful. to impress, you know, if it's part of the flat family or <laughs> you know, that's right. In our acrylic beginner series, we talk about the different families that brushes are in. That's right. And Keenan's still on that. <laughs> he was really impressed to hear that there is a Filbert brush. Old Filbert. And it's not spelled P-H-I-L-B-E-R-T. <laughs> yeah. I think we talked about, you said something about like an Uncle Phil or something. Uncle or... Phil, yep. Okay. So I'm going to go ahead and rinse my brush off since I'm changing... Uh, Going over to the warm color family now. Green is one of those colors that you really want to mix or wash out very well because it will creep up into your mixes if you don't, because it gets in there into the ferrule of the brush, the metal part. It just sneaks out. So I'm and taking takes extra over. time to wash uh, out my green paint. That's good to know. Yes. Well, and with green can definitely desaturate your pretty pinks and reds, right? And it's sometimes an we need a vibrant pink and red. We do, we do. And I just, I want to be in control and not let the green be in control. Exactly. <laughs> so I want to choose. Okay. Well, get out of here, green. Yes. So now what we're going to do is we're going to come in and add another light, kind of this pink blushy um, layer. So to do that, and you know, you can keep mixing. If you're working quickly enough, you can keep mixing with the pile that you had previously. I also like to use a spray bottle to keep my palette kind of still wet, not dry too quickly. Just a little spray there, a little mist. And then I'm gonna use this pile here and add some white. I'm gonna avoid that green color there, speaking of green. Add some white here, a little bit more of the pure red. Yeah. And then I think I'll even add a little more white. And don't be shy with your paint. If you need to um, put out some more white, if it gets contaminated, like mine is getting, especially if you're trying to get some nice light colors, don't hesitate. Okay, let's see how, yeah, that's a nice lighter and cooler value. All right, so I'm gonna come in and just again, I want to make sure not to cover up my first and second layers. And so I'm gonna be somewhat strategic, yet still try to keep it loose. So I'm just gonna kind of flip and flip like that. And then I might add another little one there. Okay? Okay. Try not to f fiddle too much. I definitely ha have to um, limit myself sometimes when I go in because I keep wanting to mess with it, but just kind of hold yourself back. No, you know what? Save it for ne the next layer, right? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. <laughs> patience. Yes, patience. Okay. See? See? I keep going. I like it. I like to have fun when I paint. 
I don't know how else you can paint. Ang are you? Do you? Can do you think you can paint angry? Sure. Oh, really? Probably. Get I mean, some anger paint out of there. I mean, sometimes like when I start painting, I do like to just kind of get it all out there and like get out whatever energy I'm feeling. Um, I think it helps, and I think it's okay. Okay. As a way to cope with some of that, those feelings. Yeah, that makes sense. Right? Yeah, that makes sense. Okay. <laughs> Because often if I can do that, then I'm gonna break through those feelings and I'm gonna to get to that space where I just feel more relaxed and comfortable. Right. Yeah. All right, so go ahead and I, I wiped off most of the paint on there, um, but I can still use this. Actually, I'm gonna get some new white. I'm gonna still leave my brush dirty is what I was going for there. So let me add some white over here. This paper palette is waxy. And so it helps the paint to mix well on it, but also it keeps it from absorbing into like a piece of paper or like a paper plate or something. All right, so I'm gonna pick up a little more of this pink and just add some white. And I want this to be quite lighter. Okay. And for this, I don't want my brush fully loaded. A little more of a sparsely loaded brush a little more of a dry brush type feel. And then I'm gonna come in here and here's our original. So I'm gonna come here and just add a few little highlights, a few little touches. What do you think? All right, so I'm gonna go there and yes, go please. there. Ooh. And I want a light touch so that, cause I love the little like dry brush type look. So don't have too much paint on your brush. And if you think you have too much, just wipe some off. There we go. I like that. I'm gonna kind yeah, of embrace that, that side so there. Good. And then if you feel like you put too much on or if you feel a certain way, you can always get kind of like a clean brush and kind of feather it out. Oh, that's a good okay. idea. Dry if you feel clean like it's a little, or wet This clean. is dry clean. Cool. That sounds funny to say. Dry clean. Dry clean. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. But now I have to, I want to make sure I get all the paint I off didn't even think about, I forgot about dry clean. Dry clean. <laughs> I actually thought about it this week when I was preparing to come here because I'm like, oh, I have to actually get the iron out. <laughs> what is up with that? Okay, so I'm gonna go ahead and look at my bloom here and see if I wanna add any final details to it. And I kinda wanna add a little bit more vibrancy. So I'm gonna grab my red here and a little bit of my yellow. And then I just wanna add a couple little touches. That's quite orange, so I'm gonna add some more red. Just wanna add a couple little just touches, kisses of, you know, a little bit of vibrant color there, okay? Let me pick where I want it to, to go. Okay, blend that in and then pop in a little bit more white and I'll fix that little part there. But I want it to have that kind of cup shape feel so I'm kind of keeping that in mind. All right, I like that. I love that bloom. I might come back and add a couple tiny little like dots of white here in a minute, but for the most part, I feel like that's done. So let me wipe off my paint. There's paint on this table. And I'm gonna wash my brush. Okay, so the next step that we're gonna take is coming in and adding some warmer values, warmer uh, hues for our leaves. I'm not as concerned about getting pink into my green because I mm. like to have a nice desaturated green anyway. All right, so I'm gonna still go ahead and use whatever is here in my blue pile, blue green pile, and I'm gonna add some yellow. This is often how I paint. I just kind of keep going and keep like mixing and, and um, not washing my brush super mo a lot. Like, I don't, why, why bother? Why bother? Right? Why, why slow down the process? I know. When you can get, you know, to the, to the process sooner. <laughs> Yes. I think. Is that, that's where I'm Don't at. block the process. Yeah. Or don't. Yeah. I, I think maybe it's more like, I don't want to think too much about it. Oh, okay. So I want a little more yellow because I'm looking and comparing it to the green that's already there and I want some contrast. Well, and it's more exciting to paint than it is to wash your brush. That's true. Yeah. That is true. Yeah, that's, <laughs> yes. Uh, okay. So make sure you have a nice fluid consistency. And then I'm gonna come through and with these, I'm gonna add, um, I'm just gonna kind of not think too much about it, okay? 
but I just don't want to cover up everything, okay? Add a few little wisps up here. And you can do like do it however you like. And then I'm going to come in with my palette knife this time and do some scratching in. And for these, I'm kind of I'm trying to mimic a little bit the leaf shape. It's hard to get perfect, but I kind of like the little squiggles there. You Maybe. can also with your palette knife, let me show you this real quick. You can even like kind of scrape like oh. blend that out. If I cuz I kind of thought that comma shape was a little too comma. Okay. <laughs> you know, I wanted it to be a little bit the less. The punctuation was too good with that leaf. Yeah. And I can even kind of blend that out a little bit too if I want some texture on my background. Okay. That's a little, I wasn't planning on doing that, but nice. I kind of had Bonus. to go with it. Go with it. All right. So next thing I want to do is add a little more yellow and a little more white. Kind of create that next layer of highlights. And are you still seeing my palette? Yes, your palette okay. looks fantastic. Good. Okay, I want to, for this, I want to kind of clear off some of the, like, gloppiness on my brush, too. It's kind of getting up there. Mm -hmm. It's because I probably should be mixing with a palette knife, but who does that? I don't know. Rules are So I'm just going to pinch it rules. in between my chop towel here, or if you have paper towel, and just pull straight. You don't have to get all the paint off, just the part that's globbing it up there. Add some more water, get a nice fluid consistency. And I just want most of the paint loaded here on the top two thirds or half of my brush. Okay, let's do a few little wisps. And I think, not yet, I was gonna maybe go and do the, uh, the stem, but I'm gonna wait just a second for that. Okay, and then up here, I'm just gonna add a couple little, so I'm holding the brush a little more lightly here. And I'm gonna kinda just do a few little wisps. Maybe I'll do a couple, use the corner of my brush and do um, some little dashes. Okay. There we go. All right. And then I feel like that's pretty good for kind of some of our warmer green tones. And so I'm going to go ahead and wipe off most of the paint on my brush. And what I want to do is go and look at this stem and, and have that show a little bit more. And I feel like the gray green is the way to go for that one. I agree. You think so? Okay. So I'm kind of starting, I'm using blue and yellow in this pile, and then I'm adding a tiny bit of black and some white over here. Okay. And I might add a little more blue just to kind of shake it up a bit. Mm -hmm. but I like that. That's nice. Okay. So with this, so I'm getting kind of I kind of want to go really bright now with this blue to kind of add a little bit of a nice contrast there. All right, here we go. Here we go. So I'm going to kind of, what I'm going to do with the stem is I don't want a straight line, like a full line, because I don't, the eye will be drawn to that. And so I'm just going to kind of do kind of a suggested little, a few little touches, okay, to kind of show. Mm. And if I feel like, if I feel like I want to break it up a tiny bit more, I'm just going to kind of scratch it in there okay and then i'm going to add these touches a few other places let's do kind of one like that and maybe one like there looks like that a big one so as you can see i'm just kind of like adding as i feel it needs it knowing that if i create a new problem for myself i've got tools to solve it right all the tools so don't be afraid to you know give something a try because worst case scenario, you paint over it. I'm gonna add a few little dots in here because I'm kind of digging this blue color, but I'll go ahead and add a little more white just to kind of give a little bit more variety as I do that. What do you think, Keenan? I love this project. Ooh, look that, at that. That color, peach reddish. I love that. Peachy-ish, reddish. Yeah. Big fan. Big fan, mm -hmm. okay. And it's easy to go overboard as, you know, you can probably mm -hmm. see, but I like it. And the thing about it too, like when we go in and we add the final white little touches, it'll make these other lighter colors or lighter values that we're using kind of fade a little bit because the white is going to take, it's going to be the star. It's going to mm -hmm. take all the attention, not all, but you know what I'm saying. Some of it. I need something right there. Okay. 
All right, so I'm gonna go ahead and just scratch in a little bit because I love to see the colors from behind pop in. Yes, that's my favorite part about it. Is it? I think so, because I mean, it's just so cool. And one thing I'm doing too is if I get extra paint on, so you can use your palette knife as I was demonstrating, or you can use the um, end of your paintbrush. And if I get some extra paint, I might just kind of like, you know, tap it around just to kind of add some more depth. Okay. I think that looks pretty good. I think we're ready for the white final touches. Yes. What do you think? I yes? agree. Okay. So I'm going to brush off what's left here. Sometimes I, I am just putting it on here and not thinking about it, but other times I'm like, oh, maybe this is kind of like a sky. Maybe there's some grass growing here. So I do, I do sometimes think about it and get kind of carried away. But I definitely encourage you to like keep some extra paper. Honestly, like if, if you were just starting out with acrylic and you were gonna buy a few products and kind of wondering like, what should I get to get started? Um, like if you get the starter box, then I would say get paper because then you can keep, you have a lot of paint and you can just have a lot of surfaces to just play and practice. Nice. So I highly recommend lots of paper. Okay. You should see my stacks of paper at home. In my art area. All the paper? Yeah. But it's fun because then I'll go through, like when I have all these brush, home brush boards, when I have them I'll, and I, maybe I'm coming down, I know I want to paint. Um, I say down because it's downstairs in our basement in my studio area. And I, um, I will sometimes flip through those and just see which one inspires me to paint oh. something to keep going with it, right? So I use it as kind of a background and a starting point. And That's then I just, it, it helps me to know, sometimes you don't know what to paint. Yeah. After you add these highlights, will you show us your brush board again? I will. So we can see the, we, we need to be able to see the whole page. The whole page. The whole, I the can do that. Brush page, the whole brush page, nothing but the brush page. Got it. So right now I'm just loading white onto my brush and I'm making sure it's a little, it's fluid, but not, I don't want it too runny because I don't want it, I want it to keep its opacity to not be able to see through it. All right. So I'm just gonna kind of pick a few little places to add some little highlights. And let me push off from the belly of the brush so I can keep it mostly towards the top. And I'm just gonna add a few, I'm using the corner of my brush, let's do that. And I'm just gonna add a few little touches. Look at that. I feel like this kind of brings some energy. Yeah. Yeah. And I am still trying to kind of keep a little, keep it curved. I'm not going to lie, working a little smaller is a little bit of a challenge for me. I'm is discovering. It? Yeah, because I'm used to working big. Full size paper? Yeah, or okay. canvas. Yeah. But we can do this. Oh, yeah. We can paint small things. We can <laughs> paint small things. Yeah. So I'm going to do a few like longer lines just to kind of mix up and break up what we've got going on. Right here, I kind of made the sh shape, a leaf shape, just to kind of add a little interest and then here I'll probably add a few little dots. Yeah. Who knows? That could be a little flower. It could be some little, some bokeh or some reflections in the background. In this painting planet, this could be, you know, sneaking light through. Who knows what it could yes. be? Yes. Okay. So now what I'm going to do with a mostly dry brush, so kind of brush off in your, on your brush board or on your table if it has paper on it, <laughs> like I do. See what I do? Yes. And nice. then Keenan will clean it up. No, I'm just kidding. I'm right. just kidding. You're right. Um, no, it's okay. I will clean up my mask. Actually, we're going to leave this here for now. All right. So let's go ahead and add just a few little, a few little touches. And I want to be very loose with this. Just a few little taps. There we go. Okay. What do you think? I, love I think it. I want a couple more, more defined. It's alive. It's okay. Bright. I see, I, I want to just keep going. Yes. If you feel like you went a little too far, which I kind of feel like I did, then I'm gonna just blend it out. Okay, I like it. So every time you make a flower, it's gonna look a little bit different. Don't feel like yours has to look exactly like mine or um, Keenan's. Yep. You know, like just make it your own, choose the colors that you want and play. And honestly, if you 
want to make a few at a time, get some more paper and kind of do multiples. I love to work on multiples because it helps me to stay loose and then I have a lot of options. Okay, so we've made these beautiful flowers for Kathleen. Please send them her way and Kathleen know that we care about you and that this community wants you to feel supported during your time of grief. As we know, grief can go, come and go for the rest of your life. And so we want you to feel inspired and know that we love you. Um, if you want to share the flowers that you made on social media, you can do so in our acrylic group on Facebook at Let's Make Art Acrylic, or you can share it on Instagram at Let's Go Make Art.